Okay, again, again, once again we are starting because two uh, two students have just now came. We are starting with our new chapter that is training and doping in sports. In this in this chapter, two uh, two topics are there. One is training, one is doping. As as I have told you, what is training? Yeah. We are not dealing with studies and all that. We are dealing with physical education and sports. So training is that preparing an athlete or an individual to give his to give his best performance to give his best performance in in a particular event or in the sports that is known as training in sports. Doping. You might have heard the word doping. What is doping? It is a, it is an use of unwanted substance or outside substance. so that an individual can take advantage from from uh, from his competitors use of any unfair means or use of any external substance into the body so that you can give you can gain advantage you can give you can gain advantage from your opponents or from your competitors so that your chances of winning are more that means you are having advantage that is known as doping so in this chapter we will be dealing with <coughs> we will be dealing with two topics that is training in sports and doping in sports so doping will deal, we will start afterwards so what is training what is training as i have told you in simple words training is that um, pre preparing an athlete preparing an athlete for preparing an athlete training regarding physical education and sports we are dealing training preparing an preparing an individual in which preparing an, an individual a training is a process in which an individual is taught skills and knowledge skills and knowledge of different games so that he is prepared for that particular game so that he is prepared for that particular game so we are we, we are we are teaching him different skills different styles different techniques for example if you are going for cricket only so you should have different components of fitness inside you as well as skills inside you like batting is a skill bowling is a skill so all these skill you should have now if you when you are giving training there are four basic four basic uh, <coughs> points that that an individual should have when i when we are giving training for a, for a, to an individual they, they they should have different components first one is physical component in this uh, what uh, what training is given uh, what an individual should possess that is speed endurance flexibility speed endurance flexibility agility these are the physical fitness components uh, which we which we uh, teach them which we give as uh, a training to an individual uh, so that he he should have such uh, he should have these in the, uh, components inside his body so that he is ready to prepare uh, to his, uh, so that he is ready to play to uh, play the game of his own choice now comes now in this technical components you should have technical in, you should have technical skills inside you you should have technical in, skills inside you like for basketball you should have you should be familiar with dribbling with blocking if you are playing with if you are if you are going with hockey you should be similarly you should be familiar with uh, dribbling stopping the ball for cricket you should be familiar with basket uh, with, <laughs> with bowling batting fielding so these are the technical skills these are the technical skills that an individual should have
ना टेक्टिकल टेक्टिकल कॉम्पोनेंट वेन एवर अ गेम इज गेम इज स्टार्टेड वेन एवर इंडिविजुअल इज प्लेइंग गेम दे बिफोर द गेम यू कॉन्ट यू कॉन्ट मेक स्ट्रेटेजी वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू डू इन द गेम सपोज इट ओके आई विल प्ले आई विल प्ले प्ले द स्पिनर इन दिस वे आई विल डू आई विल गो फॉर डिफेंस अगेन द स्पिनर बट इफ फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ फास्ट बॉलर कम्स ना यू हैव टू चेंज योर स्ट्रेटेजी यू हैव टू चेंज योर स्ट्रेटेजी so according to that according to the need you have to change your strategy and your skill so you should be tech, you should be tactically sound you should be tactically sound so these are the components that one individual should possess at doing training after that comes psychological component psychological component means an individual an individual should have should be uh, should uh, emotionally sound he should have inside he should have uh, what to say he should be from from inside only that okay i will not lose the battle i will not lose the match for example if you are if you are in cricket if you are going if you are five wickets down but the challenge is but the score is more so from first sec first second onwards only you will not say okay i am going to lose the battle no, don't worry let the opponent win no till the last moment you are not you have not lost the match you will keep on trying so you should be you should be psychological sound you should be emotionally sound so these are the components one individual should possess uh, you uh, that one uh, individual is given training about it physical component technical component technical physical component means different different fit, uh, fitness components required for playing a game what are different fitness components required for playing a game that is speed endurance flexibility agility about this i have told you earlier also what is speed what is endurance speed covering the maximum distance in minimum uh, minimum of time endurance uh, if you are saying there are different types of endurance if you are going for weight lifting and all that ability of the uh, ability of an individual how much weight he can uh, he can raise he is about to pull against the resistance or you can say against the gravitational pull that is endurance ability of the body ability of the body to do the work under the condition of fatigue or in simple words aadmi ke thakne ke baad bhi kitni der tak aadmi kaam kar sakta hai for example if you are playing football you should have an endurance of almost 120 to 150 minutes or you should have an stamina of 150 minutes because 90 minutes game you 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 can't stand at a particular place and play the game no you have to keep running all over the ground after it comes 90 minutes the match is over after it comes uh, 30 minutes if the match has gone to extra time again 90 plus 30 120 and again if the match is going to tie breaker or penalty shoot out there you should be psychologically sound you should be psychologically strong because if you if you have seen the football match when uh, whoever is going to whoever is going to take the penalty kick you can understand the pressure on him because whole crowd is shouting either in favor of him or against of him so what pressure he is tolerate he is uh, tolerating uh, he is having you can understand so for example in example of cricket the batsman who is going to play the uh, last super over same pressure penalty kick person now flexibility and agility you should be technically you should have technical component physical component tactical means according to according to the match according to the timing according to situation you should you should be able to make a strategy and change the strategy according to the opponent after that comes psychological psychologically it means again that you should be psychologically strong or mentally strong so that you are able to overcome the challenge and you are able to overcome the challenge and go for the victory and all that see to uh, if you are going for any coaching or training there are some principles that you have to follow 
then only you are able to achieve your target then only you are able to achieve your target then only you are able to reach to your goal so there are few principles today we'll be doing uh, there are eight to 10 principles we will be doing uh, dealing only with few principles today that is principle of continuity principle of continuity <coughs> what from the word only you can understand uh, what the uh, what does this principle means that don't give don't take rest in between the training if you are if you are dealing with studies also if you are dealing with sports also if you are if you are taking rest between studies so that means you are wasting your time and a lot of overload is about to come on you so there should not be any rest you should be continue you should be able to there should not be any rest between the training ha rest and recovery that is something different but don't take gap in between training don't take gap gap in between training that that is the main focus of principle of continuity so you uh, take uh, take the training continuously don't take gap in between the training otherwise it can harm it can harm your it can harm your learning or it can harm your training that is principle of continuity after that comes principle of principle of overload principle of overload in this <coughs> we are uh, the training to an individual is giving given Uh, compared to his, uh, we can say more body weight is uh, more body weight load is given to an individual. Suppose if we are going for strength training and all that in gym and so if a fifty uh, kilo person he will not lift, uh, he will be lifting the weight compared to his body weight, not below okay ten kg or twenty kg. That is principle of overload. More uh, to bring out the best from to bring out the best from a sports person, uh, more amount of weight, uh, more amount or. or you can say the more amount of weight is compared to his body weight is given to an individual so that the best of best will come from an individual after that comes principle of progression slowly and slowly you should you should increase the weight of an individual while giving training Suppose for when he when he is going for weight training and all that, you should go you should increase the weight slowly, not at once only. Today if he is lifting the weight of 20 kg, for example, if he is lifting the weight 20 kg, don't don't give him the weight of 50 kg tomorrow. Otherwise, what are the chances? The chances of most important is that chances of injury, muscle injury, or uh, muscle rupture. That are the chances of chances of injury are there. so slowly and slowly we should make progression for example if you are going for studies also you can't say that from class 1 we will directly jump into class 6 first then comes second then comes third similarly slowly slowly you should lift up you should increase the weight of an individual while doing training so that uh, nothing happens to the individual and he is also enjoy, he is also enjoying doing the training otherwise if you are lifting weight to, if you are giving him weight uh, today if you are giving him weight of 20 kg And tomorrow, give give him the weight of 50 kg. He will be saying, "Oh, I am not able to do." Plus, muscle ch- injury chances are there, and he will not be interested in doing the doing the training more and more. So th- there there should be a slow progression of load, or uh, in an uh, during the training for an individual. After that comes principle of. rest and recovery principle of rest and recovery as the name suggests that after after doing training an individual or a, when we are given some training to an individual he should be he should be given proper rest and recovery because while doing training the heart rate the metabolic rate everything goes up and to bring down to bring down to its normal state it takes time it takes time If those students who are going for weight training i think you might be going for the weight training and gym so in the gym you you might be going so what uh, generally what they do 
if today they are if today they are doing the upper body part tomorrow they will be doing the exercise for the lower body part so that what what hard work today you have done you will be able to give rest to that to that upper body so uh, within 24 to 48 hours that body is totally recovered within uh, within 24 to 48 hours that particular muscles that particular part is totally recovered and again ready for the workout so today you will be today you will be dealing with upper body part tomorrow you will be dealing with lower body part so uh, that means you have given rest to that particular part and you, that particular part has recovered totally so this comes under the principle of rest and recovery principle of individual differences as five fingers are different similarly all all individuals are different whether it is psychological wise whether it is physical wise whether it is mental wise okay some 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 might be having muscle weight more some might be having fat, uh, what to say uh, fat in them more so according to that according to according to the according to that according to that individual need you have to give training you have to give training you can't say okay everyone will be told to lift 10 kg everyone will be told to lift 20 kg no according to an individual according to the uh, which, Amma, uh, bana do. which muscle fibers they are having more which uh, which God, first, God, 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 that we have to that we have to see you will be going for uh, principle of uh, individual defense according to the uh, according to the individual we will be giving training to them if a person is having uh, more weight he can lift the weight easily so we will we can give him more more weight to uh, more weight to lift but if a person is light weight and he is not able to carry uh, more weight so according to the need and uh, according to the necessity according to the need of an individual according to the body type of an individual the uh, training is give, given. So today we have dealt with what are the principles of sports training. One is principle of continuity, principle of overload, principle of progression, principle of rest and recovery, and principle of individual difference. Not a remaining uh, few, uh, I think four or five uh, more principles are remaining that we will be dealing in our next class. If you will be having any doubt, you are most welcome, dear students. Okay, dear students, thank you. Thank you, sir.